Jeremiah, before you start, do you think this is the biggest interview you've done yet? Because you've done a lot. I mean, the vice president of the United States is kind of a big deal, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> ah, and I'm sure you did your research, right? Yeah. All right, you ready to take it away? Go, go easy on me now. Uh -oh. Go <laughs> easy on me. <laughs> Okay, so first things first, let's clear something up. So you were... <laughs> so you were born in Oakland, California, right? Yes, I was. But if I understand correctly, you're a San Francisco 49ers fan, right? Correct. So did it matter one way or another when my Raiders moved to Las Vegas? Did it, it did. Because <laughs> it was a pretty big deal for me. It changed my life, so... Kind of changed my life, too. <laughs> And speaking of football, yes. your husband is always supportive of you, and you guys have great chemistry. You guys support each other in almost every aspect of life, except for sports, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so do you guys ever bet a friendly wager on the games when rooting for opposing teams? Let me just say that we talk a lot of stuff. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> So, I was around four years old when I knew that I wanted to be a journalist. At what age did you fall in love with the law and politics? You know, I was, I was very young, um, probably around that age, because my parents were active in civil rights, and the, the heroes among the heroes of that movement were Thurgood Marshall and Charles Hamilton Houston and Constance Baker Motley. They were the lawyers who took the passion from the streets to the courtrooms to fight for equality and justice. And so I thought, okay, that's what I want to do. So I was very young. I was about your age. So I'm 10 years old, and my parents always tell me that if I stay focused, work hard, and follow my passion, I can do whatever I want to do in life. Yes. So knowing yes. all of the knowledge... <laughs> so knowing all of the knowledge that you know now, what would you say to your 10-year-old self about pursuing your dreams? Um, I would say, don't you hear no? that it can't be done, or nobody like you has done it, or, oh, you're too young, or, oh, they're not ready for you. Don't hear no, because you know my saying? I eat no for breakfast. Mm. We like that. <laughs> yes. So you are the head of the National Space Council. Yes. Would you go into space and if you had the chance? And if so, what is the maximum amount of time you'd be willing to stay out there for? <laughs> Is that a request? <laughs> <laughs> I would go to space if I could. I actually, and um, there are people in my, on my team who do know that, but um, sadly, I think that, that, that there are those who would um, prefer that I would stay on Earth for the time. <laughs> hey, but if you go and they let you be a plus one, can I be that plus one? <laughs> yeah. Two more questions left. Okay. So, what would you say to the American people with all of this misinformation and controversies going on about yeah. rigged elections? What would you say to the American people out there that are not planning on going to the polls next year because they believe their vote doesn't count? Jeremiah, that is such a good topic to raise. I knew who to call. That is such a good topic to raise. Your vote is your voice, and it's the way that we uphold our system of democracy, which is very special, but it's fragile. It will only be as strong as our willingness to fight for it. Mm. Mm. You hear that? <laughs> All right, so my final question is, yes. what advice do you have to the kids that want to grow up and be president or vice president? Follow your passion, because all said and done, if you are fortunate enough, you are going to work very hard, and when you do the work that you enjoy doing, you do it well, and all the other things come. Thank you so much for talking to me, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris. Thank you, Chair Ryan. Anthony, he presses.